Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to detail the story of actor Tyron Turner. Tyron would be born and raised in South Central LA and grew up on 51st and Hoover in the fight was Hoover's turf. Tyron wouldn't join the Hoovers, but would grow up with all the Hoovers in his area and be friends with many of them. He stayed away from the gang lifestyle, but in the area that he lived in, he would gain street smarts and learn how to conduct himself in the streets. Growing up in school, Tyron was a class clown and always wanted to be seen and make people laugh. One day, Tyron would go with his cousin to an acting workshop where the teachers would say he was a natural. This would lead to Tyron wanting to be an actor and taking it serious. In 1989, Janet Jackson was a star singer and was having auditions for her song Rhythm Nation and Tyron would catch the bus and win an audition for Janet Jackson herself and she would pick him for a role in the video. This would lead to Tyron getting two roles in 1990, one being in America Most Wanted show, playing a gang member, as well as a segment for basketball player Michael Jordan and a segment called Michael Jordan's Playground. With Tyron building momentum in his career, he would audition for a future legendary movie called Boys in the Hood, which was directed by John Singleton. Boys in the Hood follows the lives of young boys growing up in the hood and the adversity they face growing up in a tough environment. The movie starred Loris Fishburne, Angela Bassett, Ice Cube, Morris Chestnut, Nia Long, and Cuba Gooding Jr., who was the star of the movie, playing Trey Styles. Tyron would audition for the role of Trey in the movie, but would lose out to Cuba. Boys in the Hood would come out in 1991. 1992, Tyron would have three roles that year, playing in two movies, one being D Cover, where he acted as a drug dealer, and a movie called Judgment, where he played a role as a man named Titus. Also in that same year, he played on a show called Jake and the Fat Man. In 1993, Tyron had a role on Hanging with Mr. Cooper as a kid named Lewis, but his biggest role in his whole career would come that same year, and that role was in Menace to Society as the character Kane. Directors of Menace to Society, the Hughes brothers handpicked Tyron as the role of Kane as they seen him in America's Most Wanted and knew he was the right choice for the role. At that point in his career, Tyron didn't know if acting was going to be a success, but for him, this would be his big break. Menace to Society was just like Boys in the Hood and Capture Real Life and what was going on in urban communities with many youths. Tyron's character Kane will go through a lot throughout the movie, from deaths, losing family, and friends, being in the streets and what came with it, and what downfalls and decisions come with life. This role showed Tyron's acting range and what he could do as an actor. The movie had many actors like Jada Pinkin, Lorenz Tate, Clifton Powell, and many rappers like Too Short, MC8, MC Pooh, and several others. Menace to Society will go on to be a classic film and is still loved today. In 1995, Tyron would act in eight roles in appearances on TV shows like Fallen Angels, Chicago Hope, and a CBS special. He would even be in rappers videos like Scarface, Cypress Hill Illusions video, Deep's Lockdown video, and two films being Panther and Soldier Boy. In 96, he would also appear in Don't Be Wasting My Time by Mona Lisa in a movie called Method. In 1997 and 98, Tyron played in TV show New York Undercover and made appearances in music videos for rappers like Sibo, The Ghetto Boys, and Scarface again. He also appeared in movies like Little Boy Blue, and another well-known movie would come for Tyron. He played in a movie called Belly that came out in 1998. Belly was another classic movie that starred rappers Nas and DMX, and also featured other people like Method Man and T-Boss from TLC among others. Tyron's role as Big Head Rico would be an iconic role in Belly off his lines and how he acted and how he looked. Big Head Rico was a snitch and a notorious hater, so Tyron didn't like that role after being promised a lead role, which later became DMX's part in the movie. Tyron even tried to ruin the movie, but it made it an even bigger success. And so then um, we get there and uh, it's this dude that's, he's like a, a snitch. And I'm like, okay, so I'm feeling, so I'm just, I'm just annoyed at the character. I'm like, the, I'm like, man, I want to really be like the lead character that you promised me. I went and got a banana, start off. Oh. I'm dropped down. I don't like them. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just going, I'm just being ignorant with it. It blew up. Yeah, that became big, man. But I just didn't, I didn't know it was going to come off like that. I'm like being extra. I, I know I'm being a hater. But I know I'm smacking. Oh, you know, I know I'm doing all that. And that's me just trying to put tens on it. And then it just turned out to be just some weird ass hungry 
banana biting, hating ass people. You know what I'm saying? Person. <laughs> right, right. All that was intentional when you were smacking it like that. Yeah, that was that was that, that was all intentional. Um, I, I don't like that. Like that, that was, uh, cause that you can't write that. What can you write? Tell me where that is. you can write something like that. You can't write that. Nah, you right about that, man. You definitely can't. Tyron would even try his hand at rapping, but outside of acting and rapping, he always found himself in the mix of some problems in Hollywood and having some altercations with many high-profile celebrities. One being Suge Knight over a woman. Speaking of Suge Knight, right? I heard you and Suge Knight had a run-in. Is that true? So, um. Me and Dalvin, so I don't know. It was right after. It was right after uh, Tupac had passed away, and um, he called Dalvin from Josie's phone and said, "I want to talk to Tyron." And I'm, I'm like, so I'm, I'm, I'm at Dalvin's house, and, and uh, uh, Dalvin like, it's Suge. Oh, it's Suge. He said, "Yeah, Suge on the phone." Like, okay, so um, I, I, I get the phone or whatever, and Suge was. He was, you know, talking his shook stuff or whatever, and then I just was like, I was like, what? I thought they were, I think it was over a female or something at the time. He was like, I thought this was, uh, I said on the phone, I thought this was money over bitches. And so, oh, you're a comedian. Oh, you think you're, oh, you, 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 oh, you funny. And then uh, I hung up the phone. He went to jail. He never forgot that conversation. Nine years later, he came back. We at the club. I'm in a club, he sees me, we catch eyes. He pushes Buster Rhymes out the way to get to me. Like he did, it was just like, it's like he did in slow motion, cigar, shoulder moving like that. He said, uh, why are you looking hostile? We looking at each other eye to eye. Like he like, he said, why are you looking hostile? And I'm just looking at him, he got like a gang of bloods around him. I look him and we we just looking at each other. He was like he was like you know I if I wanted to you know I can have something done done to you. I'm I'm like I'm just like Dalvin Dalvin over there looking like Tyron. Please don't Dalvin know I'm like finna like and I'm like but I'm not dumb like I told you it's defense right. So you gotta know your surrounding, know the energy, know the world. I look at the situation, the energy. I'm like nah, this ain't the it's not the right time for to do nothing Interviewed weird. Interviewed Tyron Turner who was in Menace to Society. And he spoke of a situation where he uh, got Jay Prince or Jay Prince came to him or whatever to help fix the situation between himself and Suge over a female. Do, do you remember if that ever happened? And if so, what it was about? Well, see, the timelines don't match up to the female that I know. Timelines don't match up because he made it seem like this was like two thousand or less than it lingered on. That's Tyron. And so I guess he... They always say Tupac trying to be Bishop. <laughs> trying to be Kane, I think. <laughs> Talking around it because I know who the female is and I know it's going to get her in the comment section to be mad. But the time that I know uh, happened during like that Suge and Tyron had a problem behind the female. 95, 96, 90, 94, 95, something like that. Tyron had Mr. Lay. Uh, and us not knowing that she obviously had something going on with Mr. Lay uh, secretly. And um, so now Tyron, Tyron, no. Tyron. But I like the word he used recently where he said, I never had a, a fair one, a, a fight that I initiated. Which, that makes sense. Because Tyron know he got his ass whooped <laughs> behind the chalet. Tyron would even have a fight with Napoleon from Tupac's group, the Outlaws. Uh, one of my dearest friends to this day, right? So, Dalvin's like a, you know, he, you know, he, he a ladies man, you know what I'm saying? He like, he love, you know, hey, he, he love the women. So, so I, for some reason, I, he didn't ran across the, you know, him and Muta, they, 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 they kind of like, Dylan smashing the, the same girl, you know what I mean? I don't know what's going on. So they, this don't have nothing to do with me at all. So, 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 they, uh, I don't know if Mutar got his phone number. I don't know what, I don't know the full parameters. I don't know what happened, but they had words on the phone. 
So when I, you know, when I see you, it's on. Had that same energy. Woo woo, whatever, whatever. Woo woo. I didn't know that Muta was going to the same studio Dalvin going to. I did, I had I didn't I didn't know that. So we get there, and we walking. Me Dalvin and then Muta, I guess he walking or whatever, and I just hear somebody say, "This ain't no anybody can get anybody can get it." I'm like, damn, anybody can get it. I, I, that mean me. I'm, I'm, I, I, you feel me? So the way I see it, this is the way I see it. Once he say that, I turn around and I, I do what I'm supposed, I feel like I did what I, you know what I mean? I did me. So then at that point, I, I feel like I took off and then they was like, no, nah, no, nah, let's go in the street. Cause I'm just. Where I come from, I just feel like, man, like it's a problem. I just wanna, I, w I wanna take off. Like that's just, it, we know it's something. I'm taking off. You know what I mean? So we go in the middle of the street. You know, we got a. It's kind of like a crowd, crowd. You know what I mean? So we get in the middle of the street, and we get down. You know what I mean? We get down. I do my thing the way I do it, and from, from, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I can, I, I feel like I can fight. I'm not gonna say I want to lose, but I'm gonna tell the world this: I can actually fight. I can fight. So I, in my own way, I I was fighting, and I was doing a good job at what I was doing. When the gun fall out, I see the gun this could be this 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 could go all bad now because this is this is different. There's a pistol involved. I I just wanna I just wanna get out and squab like ah oh, hey the, the gun play like it you know what I mean. But it was kind of like this is where it need to end. You know what I'm saying? Like it was. It, it was kind of like, nah, I'm, I, I, I'm good. There was no uh, winner in that situation. Ho, ho, a, a fight, whatever. That's, that's the whatever. The, the, the winner was that men him fought like men. The winner was that no one was a no one was a sore loser. I don't want to say I don't want to say lost. I don't like that's not. I didn't I didn't come here to say lost. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that I did what I had to do, and he was a man about what happened. That's all I can tell you, and I respect him. And he could have pushed the line and made it a lot more worse. That's what I'm saying. And he didn't do that. And that's why I really want to get a win to him. You had a fight, because... bro. <laughs> and that's a good dude, man. We, got, we, we, we became, you know what I mean? Uh, we respect each other. You know what I mean? But the fight, you know, we had a fight. We was in L.A. And he was with Jodeci. And we had some words, you know what I mean? We had some words. It's probably can't go into what's the reason. It probably was something ignorant, but we was having some words together. And he was with um, Joe to see a few there with, um, with Tyron, you know what I mean? And um, we already had some words. So when I see him, and I'm strapped, you know what I mean? I, you know, in LA, I used to keep a strap on me. So when I seen him, we started arguing. I was like, man, you an actor. Like you can't, you know what I mean, man. Don't this, this is not men in society. Get out of here with that actor stuff. See, a lot of times people be thinking because you see an individual on the, on the movies or on television, we be thinking they soft. But Tyron really grew up in the hood, you know. So I'm, I'm, we started fighting. You know, Tyron is in shape, and this this is the time I was overweight, drinking, and we fighting, bro. And um, I keep it a hundred. It was a good one, you know what I mean. <laughs> he 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 surprised me definitely. You know what I mean? Where he um, so while we fighting and it got to a point where we started wrestling when my gun fell out, I think that really shocked him because he paused. But I ain't gonna lie, Tyron, bro, after fighting him, I was like, yeah, I gotta stop drinking. That's what I realized. I said, boy, that drinking had me a little messed up. <laughs> but respect to him. And, I, and after that, we spoke like men and we, had, we, we respect each other. In the 2000s, Tyron's career wouldn't see stardom like he did in the 90s. He wouldn't land any big name roles. And this would lead to him being in many low budget films throughout the 2000s, like 2001's Flossin', 2003's Crime Partners, 2007 Rap Sheet, Hip Hop Cops, 2008 Night Tales, 2009 Day in the Life, and in 2010, he acted in Ghetto Stories, the movie, which was a film by rappers Webby and Lil Boosie. He would play both of their uncles. Also during this time, he did a lot of writing for his friend, Jamie Foxx, and did a lot of things behind the scenes. In the 2010s, Tyron acted in movies like Hillbilly, When a Woman's Fed Up, She Was Eve, Supremacy, and The Ghetto. In 2016 movie, Meet the Black, starring Mike Epps, Tyron would play his character Big Head Rico, reprising his role. And in 2017, Tyron acted in TV shows like Tales, In the Cut, and Blackish. In 2020, Tyron was on show with Sherman Showcase, 
as well as movies Fatal and Dutch. And in 2021, Tyron reprised his role again in Meet the Blacks 2 as Big Head Rico. Tyron is still writing and putting the work to this day behind the scenes. Even though his acting career didn't take off as much as he imagined, he still has some legendary roles and iconic parts. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.